absolute obscene salaries that are being paid to consultants and senior managers within that department and channel such monies towards frontline services because that is the job that Michael McGimsey should have done for the past four years and quite frankly he hasn't been at the races. I think that was, I will. Would, 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 would the chairman not also note a certain irony that um, there's a threat that the health minister and the, maybe the Ulster Unionist Party might walk away from the executive, but they've waited for four years to walk away from it, pocketing their salary for four years and maybe sacrificing their last two days' salary. Do you not think that the, the public will have a certain amount of cynicism about that? I fully, I fully agree with the member. and. Uh, Last night when I did go home, there was a repeat of the uh, leadership debate from the, the summer elections, where the five leaders were discussing issues such as uh, the need for uh, some of the ministers to outside to return the vast sums uh, of uh, pensions, of bonuses that they're going to receive uh, in the wake of stepping down uh, as ministers. Uh, and one wonders uh, if the Ulster Unionist uh, ministers or ministers from other parties a step down. I think the public will recognise that as uh, ministers run away uh, from the job uh, and as such they perhaps should uh, hand, hand back some of the money because they haven't done the job that they've been placed uh, there to do. So I, I think it is very petty, very petty that the Ulster Unionist Party are playing politics with an issue uh, as Could significant. I the member to come back to the bill as far as possible? As significant uh, as, as health. Because it is a vital issue, and health is, is a big part of this budget, uh, Can Coyer. So I think it is, it is important that, uh, that, that we make those points. So I do look forward, Can Coyer, to the debate ahead. The Executive and the Assembly. Yes. The member uh, and his uh, co colleague opposite seems to be uh, acting in unison in their, in their DUP Sinn Féin coalition uh, leadership here. But my question, in terms, in terms of, in terms of. Uh, salaries from uh, professionals in the medical profession, would he accept that there can be difficulties attracting professionals to places such as Alton McElvin and the west of the province, and that if salaries in this part of the United Kingdom for, for uh, jobs which are in short, short supply were reduced from other parts, there would be even more calamity and shortages of essential posts and is he prepared to accept the responsibility, such as the delays in reassessing x-rays that might follow? I should glad the members raised the issue of Alton McAlvin and the North West, because we all know of the scare stories that the Health Minister has been putting out there uh, about the, the cancer centre in the North West, which will, will be built but won't be staffed, uh, and other stories about uh, X thousands of jobs are going to be lost. But yet the Health Minister has provided any detail to his committee. Uh, he's treated uh, his committee like mushrooms, to be honest. Uh, he's kept them totally uh, in the dark, uh, and that in itself is, is, is simply disgraceful. Uh, we, we did have a debate yesterday about uh, committees uh, and how they relate to the executive uh, and the assembly in terms of uh, the committee stage of the plural blacks bill, uh, and I think the committees, uh, and certainly the health committee in this example, uh, needs to be treated uh, with respect and needs to be provided details uh, of the draft budget from the Health Minister because if you look at the details of the budgets from each respective department, you look at DRD for example, I think it's about 40 to 50 pages worth uh, of detail when it comes to health, there's very little detail and I think the Minister and the Member should reflect on that and ensure that, that in future uh, when Members and Ministers from his party uh, are bringing details of their budget to this House to the committees that they provide the full detail because health has around 50% of the entire budget and I think it's absolutely scandalous uh, that the detail. It's a good point about level of detail and, and ministers, uh, the way they present their budget to the Assembly. Would, would, would the Chair of the Finance Personnel Committee agree with me that in fact we should allow uh, ministers to scrutinise each other's budgets and that we should also have a budgetary committee here in this assembly that was capable of scrutinising the budget and existed simply to do that, not just your committee, uh, sir, as a, as a finance committee with broader responsibilities. So would you agree that in fact the system is very broken and unless the DUP and Sinn Féin work to fix it, we will continue to have bad budgets in here? Well, I, I think it's important to recognise that each department 
has a committee which shadows it, and each committee, each committee should have full detail of the budget uh, for that particular department uh, and should be treated with respect uh, by their particular minister, and that hasn't been uh, the case uh, in this instance. Giving way, and uh, why do I happen to agree with the comments made by Colin uh, McDevitt? Uh, about the importance of actually having a, a proper scrutiny process and having uh, indeed a proper budget committee rather than simply a finance committee. Would the member also agree that central to actually making the system work right across the board as parties taking their place on the executive seriously and not playing games? I absolutely agree with the, the comments that the, that the member has just made because you can't, you, you can't. Let me finish my sentence first. I'll, I'll give away in a moment. <laughs> I'll get back on it. Exactly, is the honourable member actually saying he's playing games? Who's playing games with this executive? Who's playing games with the lives of the people of Northern Ireland? Pardon. Short and simple. Yeah. No, just, just the, the Tory boys generally in the corner. Take a bit of the remarks to the chair, but order, 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 order the member to be heard. Order. No, I, I fully recognise and agree with the, the comments from, from Mr. Farry because the executive should act uh, in a cohesive and coherent manner and you can't have a situation uh, where members of the Ulster Unionist Party or members of the SDLP continue to go in uh, and mess about or sometimes in the case of uh, Michael McGimsey he doesn't bother going in at all uh, and another example is how the SDLP uh, went into the budget review group uh, which was set up collectively uh, to look at ways of how we could generate revenue to mitigate against the impacts of these particular cuts and what did they do? They went out of the budget review group and took all of the good suggestions and put it in a nice document that they released in December of last year. Two months, two months after every other party released their proposals in regard to the comprehensive spending review. Uh, I thank the member for giving way. Is the member not aware, perhaps he wasn't paying attention in the debate last night, uh, that the SDLP actually produced comprehensive proposals in April 2009 on the budget and how to reform the budget to help protect frontline services and create jobs. And I can quote from the Belfast Telegraph at the time, which actually said that the SDLP pro proposals are most appealing in terms of employment protection, enhanced training schemes, a wage subsidy scheme and support for nursing jobs. Uh, and can the member point out what, which of those useful proposals the executive actually adopted? I love the SDLP continually refer to this... Uh, how are you doing, Dolores? I love how the SDLP continually refer to this document in 2009 and how all their great ideas emanated from there. And I remember one of their members being on the radio saying that uh, we uh, came up with the idea of the plastic bag levy. Everybody copied us. Uh, it was in our document in 2009. Well, when, the, when their document was released in 2009, myself and other members of Sinn Féin were actually drafting up proposals for a bill in regard to a plastic bag levy. So I'll not accept anything. Uh, from that document as being fact, because while the SDLP at that particular time were put forward, uh, what they would see as proposals, we were already implementing them. And that is fact. Would the member give, would the member give way? Yeah. Uh, Maggot, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, I thank uh, the member for giving way. I mean, obviously, we're hearing uh, this morning again a number of uh, suggestions or allegations assertions, whatever, from members of the SDLP. Would the member agree that uh, last evening, or actually throughout yesterday, uh, obviously the SDLP had tabled the amendment, not one of whom who spoke at the lengthy debate yesterday actually addressed their amendment because it was of such lacking of such substance that they couldn't even address it. So they criticised, they spent the day criticising everybody else, telling everybody what is all wrong. Having tabled the amendment didn't actually even have the courtesy or I suppose they were maybe intelligent enough. They didn't even address their amendment. But on the point that they're making,